I'd like to now take a look at some of our organizational settings that we have here in Microsoft 365. So here we are on portal.microsoft.com. Going to go over to the settings drop down blade and we will go to org settings. And so from there we start out on services. Now what this does is uh, Microsoft 365 is able to detect which services that you have available to you based on the licenses and all of that that you have. And um, as you scroll down, you can click these various links and it'll take you straight to uh, more, uh, more settings that can be configured related to that service. So for example, I just clicked on the Microsoft 365 on the web, which if you're not familiar with that, that's basically an, an online version of the Microsoft 365 apps like Word Online, and Excel Online, and all that. So it tells you here to choose to allow users to open certain external files. If you want to allow certain external files, it says let users open files stored in third-party storage services in Microsoft 365. So by uh, uh, having this checked, I'm going to allow that. If I wanted to turn it off, I could. So the, the point is, as you can see here, is each one of these you can click on, like here's Microsoft Teams, and there can be various settings that can be turned on or turned off for each one of those types of services okay um, so you know you can definitely go through here and look and see what's available there's lots and lots and lots of services obviously you don't need to memorize all these services right now but it is important to be aware of the fact that um, if I there are certain things that I might want to turn on or turn off for the whole organization related to that specific service okay so like sway here they tell you this is for, you know, Sway makes it easier for sharing, interacting, personal stories, presentation, newsletters. When you check any of these boxes here, you're setting this for the whole organization. So this isn't just for one individual person. This is the whole organization. And that's the one thing I need you to take away from this, is that org settings is exactly what it sounds like it is. It's organization settings. All right. Um, and so these settings are for all these various services that you see here for the whole organization. The next thing we've got is security and privacy. So with security and privacy, as you can probably imagine based on its name, this is gonna be related to org settings involving security and of course the privacy uh, policies and settings that we have. So for example, you have Bing data collection. Uh, choose whether you're gonna, uh, whether Bing can learn for your organization. If you don't want Bing searching information, you can take that off. You have customer lockbox, so provide additional security by requiring approvals through lockbox email requests and access to data for your organization. This will, uh, not, not going to get deep into this, but this, in a nutshell, this involves Microsoft support. And uh, if Microsoft support, if you ever have to call Microsoft support for uh, any reason and need to, they need to get access to some data that for some reason you don't have access to, maybe you got locked out, then um, you can there's a thing called lockbox, which uh, means that there's an additional layer of, of security. In a nutshell, I'll say this also, that um, Microsoft has a, a group of people. Any support person at Microsoft must go through a group of people to get approval to even touch your uh, Microsoft tenant. So if you are locked out or you do have a problem, before they can do anything, they have to get approval from a group of people at their at, at Microsoft. But w this is adding an additional layer of protection by requiring email approval. So then we have idle session timeout. If somebody's idle, obviously you can uh, you could make it where users um, you know users automatically you know get out of their um, their web apps after a period of time if they're they're not using their web apps or whatever they they get logged out right so that's the idea so idle session timeout signs users automatically out of their apps uh, and then you got password expiration uh, policy you can have passwords expire at a certain time so this policy you choose here applies to everyone in your organization set passwords never to expire this is the default um, it used to always be that we'd want passwords to expire and users to have to change passwords every couple of weeks, but with the help of multi-factor authentication and all that, it kind of it doesn't really improve your security a whole lot. 
Um, so then privacy profile, you have this, specify a privacy statement that you want people to see in your environment, you can do that. Privilege access, so they tell you here this is a, a way for people in your organization to provide tasks that would otherwise require a higher level of permission or an admin role. So when somebody submits a request to the access privilege task, the default approval group, you can choose, um, you, you choose, can uh, approve or deny that if you want. So I could allow privilege access request and choose default approval if I want by selecting this and then I can specify a group that's based on that. All right, then I can, I can allow pronouns. Uh, users can put pronouns in their profile. I have self-service password reset. Um, not getting in a lot of depth on that right now, but that involves users being able to reset their passwords if they need to. And then you got sharing, control access for sharing uh, information outside the organization. So like this will involve things like guests. If uh, a user is sharing a document with somebody that's, that doesn't actually have an account in our environment, like they're a guest user, this is going to control some settings on that. So this is let users and new guests support this. So by default, it is going to be supported. Keep in mind that uh, usually the way that works is even if you turn it on at the organizational level like this, you you can still go into the uh, application itself. So for example, take Microsoft Teams. I could go into Microsoft Teams and I could control which users can do that if I want. So there there is a more granular level of, uh, of control that way. The last thing I'll show you here is just organizational profile. Pretty simple idea here. This is just going to let you customize your uh, organizational information. So I can have custom apps, app launch launcher tiles. Tells you that it create custom tiles that will appear in the all app section of Office 365 app launcher for all your users. Users can pin custom tiles. So you have custom tiles, you have custom themes. So if you want to set a, a custom theme for your organization, you no know, color, graphics, all that. So all these various things, that's what that's going to involve. You know, help desk information. If you want to supply some help desk information for users if they need help. Uh, keyboard shortcuts. Organization information. I can plug, you know, information about my organization. Uh, release preferences. This gets into, you know, choose how your organization gets new features and service updates from Office 365. Right now it's standard. So your entire organization gets updates when we release them broadly, or I could do targeted, release to everyone. Your uh, entire organization gets updates early, or targeted release for select users. So you can pick like the IT people to get uh, updates a little earlier for all of this. So um, that's the idea there. Send email notifications from your domain. This is lets Microsoft send notification messages from the email address within your organization instead of a Microsoft email address. And then finally, support integration, integrate your internal support tools. There are uh, you know, certain capabilities there that we could utilize involving our own support services. We could use our own support tool and um, you know, integrate this into uh, the Microsoft support integration. Of course, not everything's supported, but you can click that learn more link to see all the supported capabilities you can use there. All right, so that is the idea of these three items. I wouldn't stress over like having to memorize all of these or anything like that, but it is important to remember that these are org settings, so what you set here will affect your entire Microsoft 365 and Azure AD tenant organization. Hey, this is John Christopher. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I want you to know that I'm trying really hard to grow this channel, so I hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe. Also, if you'll check the description in this video, I've got a link for you that can show you how you can get access to all my different courses. I have lots of different Microsoft certification courses that'll help you pass your exam. All right, thanks a lot for watching the video, and I hope to see you again. <music>